So it's no secret that I picked up the Sigma 85mm f1.4 and this lens has basically been glued to one of my Sony a7IV's for the last six weeks. So today I'm going to be breaking down five reasons why you guys should also consider picking up the 85mm prime lens. In this video I'll be talking about full frame terms, so that's an 85mm for a full frame camera. For all you APS-C fans that's a 56mm. So the first reason why the 85mm is an awesome prime lens is because of the subject separation. You can really make your subject stand out from the foreground and the background. And there's two reasons why the 85mm in particular gives you this more compressed and dreamy out of focus background which we all know is bokeh. You guys are probably already familiar with having a maximum aperture or a lower f-stop will allow more light to travel through the lens and onto the sensor which will give you more background blur or bokeh. So wider the aperture, the narrower the depth of field you get, which means only a small part of the image will be in absolute sharp focus while the rest of the image will be blurred. You actually get more background blur or bokeh on the 85mm because it is actually quite zoomed in. This reduces the field of view, removing any distracting elements that you might experience when you say shooting on a 35mm. Having this reduced field of view will compress the foreground and the background together, making the two appear much closer to each other and this also blurs out the image much more. So this is a really great way to isolate the subject from the foreground and the background to create depth and visual interest. You can also get super creative with placing objects in the foreground like leaves and glass and actually shooting through these objects. This increases the amount of depth that you have in your image and because they're completely blurred out they're not distracting at all. So it's no secret that 85mm is a great portrait lens. Not only do you get that immense amount of subject separation, but you also get very flattering facial features at close distances. It allows you to capture the subject's face with a very pleasant distortion or a slimming effect, making it ideal for headshots and close-up portraits. Here's an example of a close-up portrait shot on the 85mm compared to a wider focal length. You notice that the 85mm does look a lot more flattering and slimmer while the wider lens actually elongates the face a little bit wider and makes them look as if they've gained weight almost. But this is actually the opposite when you take a few steps back and you compose your image in a full body shot. Now the wider lens actually makes the subject a lot taller and also slimmer where the 85mm actually compresses the model and makes them seem a little bit more shorter and as if they've gained weight. So the 85mm is a great portrait lens from the waist up. It's not really the most versatile portrait lens as it is really only reserved for headshot photography. Generally wider lenses are better for full body shots but breaking all of these rules can give you some really interesting images and I really encourage breaking all of these very traditional and old outdated photography rules. So for portrait photography the 85mm works great especially when you pair it with a wider lens. My personal go-to setup is the Sigma 24-70 along with the Sigma 85mm f1.4. 85mm are sharp, like really sharp. And this is for all manufacturers, for some reason the 85mm prime lens is sharper out of all of the different focal lengths, that being prime lenses and zoom lenses. Here's a graph from the website DxO Mark. The 85mm is right at the top for sharpness, you also get a very minimal amount of distortion and vignette and also chromatic aberration on the 85mm. And there's nothing we can do about this, this is just basically physics and how an 85mm is grouped 
grouped together with its different lens elements. You can even see that the OG 85mm Sigma Art Lens is at the top of this list. I have the new version which is the DGDN, the DN standing for Digital Native. It has the same optical elements but it has been redesigned for mirrorless cameras to make it a lot smaller and the autofocus is a lot quieter and faster and way more accurate. If you guys are keen to check out this 85mm I will leave an Amazon link down below. So out of all of the different prime lenses, the 85mm is definitely the most compact. They're a lot shorter and also a little bit lighter than say like a 24mm or a 50mm. And they're definitely a lot smaller than say a 70 to 200 f2.8. So this is making it a lot easier to carry around in your camera bag. And for all of you APS-C fans, check out this Sigma 56mm f1.4. This lens is tiny and I pretty much take this lens everywhere with me if I'm not doing client work. Even though this is an APS-C lens in the crop mode on the Sony a7 IV, this lets in much more light than my 70 to 180 at f2.8. So my fifth and final reason why the 85mm is an awesome lens is because it's just fun. It limits you to one focal length so you really have to think in focal lengths which will require you to move around a lot to recompose your subject. On the 70 to 200, I just find that I end up zooming too much on that lens, and I really do find that 85mm for a lot of situations is really the sweet spot. Anything longer than that, especially for portraits, I just think it is too dramatic in a way, and it's just taking away all of the visual interest in the background away from the image. And just shooting on the 85mm can really expand your creativity and really put you out of your comfort zone and try things out of your creative scope. And of course, the amount of subject separation and bokeh you get with the 85mm just makes it fun to shoot on. There's nothing that really compares it if you shoot at 85mm on the 70 to 200 it's just not really the same for whatever reason the 1.4 and 2.8 there's a massive difference if you guys like the way that I edit my photos there are presets in the link down below also I use my LUTs to color grade my videos if you're considering picking up the 85mm prime lens I will leave a link down in the description down below and if you are interested in this 56mm f1.4 lens from Sigma you guys can check out this full review that I made a while ago. Otherwise, I hope you guys subscribe, check out my other videos, and we'll see you next time.